Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Test the Time News. Episode 372. On Now You Know. Thank you to Copilot for sponsoring this episode. Copilot is an affordable fitness coaching app that provides personalized workouts tailored to you and your goals, while taking into account what fitness equipment you have or if you don't have any equipment. Copilot is really simple to use. Answer some quick questions about your goals, what you like, what you don't like about working out, then get matched with your coach. And meeting your coach is a convenient call. We talked over my fitness experience with my workout goals, and we also talked about my lifestyle and any concerns I have, like my years of back problems. Uh, then your coach will customize and share your workout plan. That plan might include traditional workouts for home or the gym and ideas for everyday activities that you might not think of as exercise. My plan was made just for me to work for my life. The personalization makes it easy to stick with. You never have to think about what to do when it comes to fitness because it's all planned for you. I'm having a great time with my workouts and I can tell that I'm getting stronger. The best part is that I haven't been feeling any back pain since I started which is kind of unusual for me because, uh, you you know, almost every week I'd be complaining about it. And my workouts are also going great. I love that I can work out at times that work for me. And so, I mean, sometimes that's, uh, you know, midnight. Yeah. Whenever you work out, the Copilot system becomes your coach's eyes and ears by automatically tracking your sets, pacing, and range of motion. Your coach's voice is right in your ear telling you what to do next and correcting any problems with your pacing or form. Reaching your fitness goals is easy with plans that work for your busy schedule. Work out anytime, anywhere that works for you with the Copilot app. Stay consistent with daily coach check-ins, progress tracking, and workout feedback. It's great to get accountability and support from a real person with the flexibility to work out on my own schedule. Now, you'll also have the ability to work on up to four routines or habits at a time in the areas of movement, nutrition, mindfulness, and recovery. Click our Copilot link or use the QR code on screen to get 14 days free with your own personal trainer. All right, so I thought we'd start off with what will be arguably one of the biggest news technology and cultural events of the year, if not the decade. I'm talking about the Cybertruck delivery event happening at Giga Texas on Thursday, November 30th. This is going to be really exciting. I mean, we ordered our Cybertruck within seconds of the order page going live. And according to the Cybertruck Owners Club Reservation Tracker, we should be about number 20 in line. So, I mean, it's possible we'll be getting our Cybertruck at the event. All right, let me check our email and see if Tesla has reached out to us because, I mean, we'll take any trim level. It doesn't matter. I want that Cybertruck. Oh, and by the way, I saw that we got some Tesla referrals. So thank you to those of you who used our referral code so that we could get some Cybertruck event tickets. Did you order those tickets, by the way, um, with our points? Because I was thinking now that we've got our mobile solar studio working, I mean, it worked great for last week's in depth, didn't it? I mean, that we drive down to Texas, we'd live stream the Cybertruck event from our solar trailer. We can have guests, we can do live coverage, we can drive around in our new Cybertruck around Giga Texas. That's going to be so cool. Okay, what has gotten into you? I mean, normally you're so calm and collected. Now you're acting like a kid at Christmas. I feel like a kid at Christmas. I mean, until the event date was announced, I just wouldn't allow myself to even accept that this was ever going to happen. Now that it's happening in just five weeks, I mean, my brain is just exploding. I can't wait. Well, I'm, I don't mean to rain on your parade, uh, but first of all, to answer your question, no, um, I didn't order the Cybertruck event tickets. Why not? Because Tesla took it down from the referral page, um, so you can't order tickets anymore, neither can we. So even though we indeed have the referral credits now, we can't get the tickets. And we didn't get the invite, even though... What? I mean, remember early on in Tesla's history, where you would get enough referral points and then you get VIP access right. to every Tesla event. We are VIPs. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. We don't have an invite. We aren't able to go. So that sucks. Okay, okay, okay. Tesla's gonna reopen the Cybertruck event tickets. I'm sure of it. Right, right Tesla? Tesla? Secondly, Tesla's busy making Cybertrucks and we haven't gotten our order email because they're busy making our Cybertruck as we speak. We just have to believe. Oh, please, please believe. If you believe, wherever you are, clap your hands. Are you clapping your hands? Tesla, can you hear that? Look, you, you want to drive all the way from Massachusetts to Texas, towing a trailer with two electric trucks that can't use supercharging, 
just to be disappointed? That's what you want? Challenging, I know, but I want to be a part of this incredible earth-changing event. We've been there for just about every Tesla event for the past seven years. I don't want to miss this one. So, worst case, we camp out in the Giga Texas parking lot and live stream from our solar trailer. We're off-grid with Starlink and our batteries, so it's not like they can pull our plug. And we'll do what we've done so many times before. We'll cover the event. If you want us to do it, folks, clap your hands. Don't clap. Wait, 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 I can hear them. I can hear them. I, I hear our viewers clapping. I, they believe. They want us to go. Our cyber truck is real. Oh our cyber truck is real. I can hear them clapping. Okay, they want us to go. We're going to the event. We're going to the event. We're go. going to go to the event. We're going to the event. Uh, look, I'm really disappointed. I, I I wish that Tesla would just stick by something that they implement, like, ever. That'd be really nice. Okay, you can snap out of it. <laughs> I, but, I mean, like, you know, like, we, we had the VIP thing. That's why I didn't want to push our referral code. I wanted to make sure that our community got to use their own, you know, get no, referral I think that's credits. The, that's one of the things that really makes me mad is they said would be VIPs for every event. And this is an event. And, like, they just, I mean, I... I'm kind of speechless, I, Tesla. Yeah. I, I mean, I just, I always hate not trying to not be a jerk and then getting punished for mm -hmm. it of like, okay, we're going to take our referral code off. I didn't get any referral credits. I didn't need any credits. I had uh -huh. unlimited supercharging practically up until April um, when they just take it away. But I don't know. That's why we should still go to the event, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here is an image that speaks for itself. Is that a... Yup. And they, yup, the Cybertruck is bulletproof. Is there a video? Not of it getting shot, but check this out. That's a lot of dents. 75 by my count. <laughs> And uh, Elon responded on X saying, we emptied the entire drum magazine of a Tommy gun into the driver door, Al Capone style, no bullets penetrated into the passenger compartment. Okay, and I mean, they even fired close to some of the door edges and we still don't see any penetration. So the Cybertruck is completely bulletproof? Well, it depends on what you're shooting it with. I okay. mean, the Tommy gun shoots 45 ACP, which is, you know, the cartridge, the bullet, which is more powerful than the more common nine millimeter, but it's not the most powerful bullet in the world. There are many more powerful, even pistol cartridges like the 44 Magnum. And of course there are rifle rounds that pack way more punch. And of course, none of these have been tested as far as we know on the truck. He opened a Tommy gun against right. it. So this would basically be like level two body armor, but of course this is car armor. It's basically, I think it's still level two car armor armor as well. I was trying to look into it, but I'm not a gun channel. So this isn't a tank? No. I mean, from what we see here and what Tesla has said in the past, I don't think that this is necessarily going to be stopping any AK rounds. Okay. So what does this mean? Well, despite what Hollywood would have you believe, most cars are not bulletproof. The doors and the body panels are not going to protect you from bullets that are flying at you. And I mean, we're seeing that the stainless steel of the Cybertruck is most likely going to be able to completely stop handgun rounds. Yeah. And I think that it's easy to want more protection. Like, what about stopping 30 odd six? But you got to keep in mind that actual like bulletproof cars that transport heads of state usually cost well over a million dollars. They weigh 6,000 pounds or more. And these are usually sedans and they can't accelerate anywhere near close to the Cybertruck. I mean, it's better than any other car you've probably ever driven. Hey, Lieutenant, you tankers have really got it soft. Man, this is the way to travel with a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of machinery under you. If we run into German Tigers, you won't think so. This thing's only got about four inches of armor. Oh, yeah? Say, how thick do you think this GI shirt is? <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of people are excited about the Model 3 refresh, including me. And if you live in the UK, you can get excited too, because Tesla has now updated their order page to show that the upgraded Model 3 Highland is available to order with an estimated delivery of January, February. And it's cheaper. Look at that. The rear wheel drive Model 3 is 39,990 pounds. That's 3,000 pounds cheaper than it was in September. Some upgraded Model 3s have already been seen in Norway last week, and the order page shows that deliveries, if you order today, are expected two to six weeks out. So 
these Model 3s are coming from Giga Shanghai, right? Because Giga Berlin is currently only producing Model Ys. Correct. Uh, refreshed Model 3s have been spotted being tested on U.S. roads. Ooh. So it is hopeful that Tesla will start making them in Fremont and deliveries will start in North America early next year. Um, but I really just am falling in love with this new front design. Yeah, I think that, I mean, the front design is great, but there were so many other features that mm. were talked about in this car from the double glazing going all the way around the car. Basically, every window was going to have it mm -hmm. um, to an improved sound system, which like, I mean, I have a 2018 Model 3 and the sound system still makes me freaking cry. So I think that this is awesome. And I think that this could really help boost Model 3 sales. I agree. And not that they've been lagging or anything, but like obviously the Model Y has been the star of the show for <laughs> as soon as it came out. Back in September, white hat hacker Greenlee Only posted that he spotted cluster alert icons for driver drowsiness. Are you paying attention now? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm awake. Now, according to the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual found in new UK Model 3s, quote, the driver drowsiness warning is designed to notify drivers who appear to be drowsy by monitoring driver facial characteristics as well as driving behavior to determine patterns indicative of drowsiness. When driver drowsiness is detected, an alert displays on the touchscreen in the cards area and an alert is sounded. Okay, so I guess I'm confused. And it's not because I'm not paying attention. It's because it says this. When enabled, the driver drowsiness warning systems activates over 65 kilometers an hour when driven for a minimum of 10 minutes and autopilot is not engaged. Okay, so what are you confused about? Okay, well, first off, 65 kilometers an hour is about 40 miles an hour. So if I'm driving below 40 miles an hour, the system won't warn me if I'm showing signs of drowsiness. Also, I have to be driving for more than 10 minutes before it will notify me if I'm drowsy. Why 10 minutes? And then lastly, if I engage autopilot, it won't notify me if I'm drowsy. I mean, I get that the car is in autopilot, but I'm supposed to be wide awake and paying attention to the road. So why not alert me if I'm getting drowsy? Good question. I mean, maybe the data shows that people don't fall asleep driving at slower speeds. What I do know is according to NHTSA, 684 people in the United States died in 2021 from accidents related to drivers falling asleep behind the wheel. Crap. That's more than the number of people who die from electrocution which is 503, or carbon monoxide poisoning, 438. Yeah, it's twice the number of people who die from aircraft and railroad accidents every year combined, 248. Again, this is why we need self-driving cars, people. I'm just glad that Tesla is now including this in the hardware and software suite. It's gonna save a lot of lives. The only problem is for people who like have tired faces, <laughs> like, is this just gonna be like, you're sleepy, and it's like, no, I'm not. I just look this way. I don't know. I feel like it could happen. <laughs> Howdy, Bob. It's time to play. Who's adding next this week? Remind the folks at home how they can play along, Bob. Okay, Bob. For our viewers playing along at home, just take out your next bingo cards. And when I pull a name out of the bin here, mark it on your card. Okay. The first person who gets Nax spelled out wins. Okay, I'm ready to play, Bob. All right, here we go. BMW. BMW. Okay. Next, Mini. Mini. Got it. Got it, Bob. Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Got that one too, Bob. And Toyota. Toyota. I'm a winner, Bob. I got Nax. Then you're a winner, Bob. And we're all winners because now BMW, which owns Mini and Rolls Royce, and Toyota, the car company that sold the most cars, over 10 million worldwide last year, will incorporate the Nax ports into certain models starting in 2025. But how about charging adapters, Bob? Will Toyota be providing a CCS to Nax adapter to Toyota and Lexus owners soon so they can charge the Tesla superchargers? Toyota didn't say anything about that in the press release, Bob, so who knows? So can you recap which companies now have deals with Tesla to use Nax? I can, Bob. Aptera, Vinfast, Fisker, Rivian, Ford, also Lincoln, GM, Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Nissan, Infiniti, Honda, Acura, Hyundai, Kia and Genesis, Jaguar Land Rover, BMW, Volvo, Polestar and Lotus, Mitsubishi, and Toyota. So I guess we're still waiting on Stellantis and VW, Bob. We'll have to see if they join the party next week on Who's Adding Next this week. Hey, if you hit the like button, it would really help us out. Just hit it now, no, right now. So I want you to take this next story with a big old grain of salt, okay? The Kilowatts posted this on X. Tesla's parts catalog confirms Tesla's working on a performance version of the new Model 3, potentially a Plaid. Oh man, that's amazing. 
Except that I went to go look at the parts catalog and well, the US parts catalog doesn't have the refresh. So, okay, I'll start looking for other ones. I found that the Dutch catalog has two options for Model 3. So I selected September 2023, got the refresh. And I go to the badge section and mine doesn't have a plaid badge. And in all of the pictures that Kilowatts posted, there's no actual part number for that plaid badge. So what does that mean? That means that either the kilowatts is lying, which I think is pretty unlikely, um, that I'm incompetent and didn't find the same part catalog, which is pretty likely. But I mean, I tried them all. I tried as hard as I could. Or Tesla removed it. <laughs> That's a mystery. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that we're going to get a Plaid Model 3? Do you think that we need it? I mean, the Performance Model 3 is already pretty beefy as it is. Hmm. Um, a lot of people were thinking that like it wouldn't be a tri-motor. It would just be that they would put the Plaid motors into hmm. it, um, beef up some horsepower. I just don't know if the, the car really needs it. Yeah. I mean, it's if they did, it'd be great. But I, I mean, just, do any of the Plaids need it? No. But it's just but... nice to have. <laughs> So we reported recently that GM had produced 18 Silverado EV pickup trucks in the third quarter. And that got us pretty excited that maybe we'd be getting the Silverado EV that we ordered, maybe even before our Cybertruck. But it looks like we'll have to wait on the Silverado EV pickup. I, I don't want to wait. I want to put all the electric pickup trucks head to head. Our Rivian R1T, our Ford F-150 Lightning, our upcoming Cybertruck and the Silverado EV. Why wait? Oh, don't get me wrong. I want the Silverado EV as well. It's just that last week, according to a GM spokesperson, GM is going to push back production of the Chevy Silverado EV pickup and the GMC Sierra EV at the Orion assembly plant in Detroit, Michigan until 2025. 2025? Why? The spokesperson said to better manage capital investment while aligning with evolving EV demand. In addition, we've identified engineering improvements that we will implement to increase the profitability of our products. OK, OK. But GM has already started making the Silverado EV at their Detroit Factory Zero. So, I mean, they're still making them. But Factory Zero is only running one shift currently. GM won't start the second shift until 2024 when they're done making the current Chevy Bolt. And then? Then they'll retool and start production of the GMC Sierra EV and hopefully become operational again in Q1 of 2025. This does not bode well for GM. I mean, my guess is that they want to, A, find ways to lower costs because they're losing so much money on every EV they make. And B, they probably want to get a look at the Cybertruck, uh, both the pricing and the features, before making too many Silverados. Because if the Silverado isn't price and feature competitive, GM is in big trouble. We talk about how Ford is reliant on their F-Series pickup trucks, but we can't overlook that Chevy Silverado is the second best-selling pickup truck in the U.S. and GM's best-selling vehicle. GM sold 523,000 of them last year. Right. If the Cybertruck starts eating into their Silverado sales, they're in trouble. So Tesla seems to have made an about face this quarter in an effort to boost sales. Didn't you get an email from Tesla? Can we order our Cybertruck? <gasps> Woohoo! No! We're no, gonna get that. no, not that email. I'm because we didn't get that email. I'm talking about the email from Tesla offering you to transfer your free supercharging for life of Sparky, your Model X, over to a new Model S, X, or Y before the end of the year. Well, that's weird because earlier this year, Tesla was offering five thousand dollars off to owners who traded in, you know, their free supercharging for life Model S's and X's, and then offered six years of free supercharging on a new car with a similar trade in. So there must be at least, I don't know, like 100,000 Model S's and X's with free supercharging for life out there, probably more. Do you think this is going to generate a meaningful number of sales? I mean, tell us what you think in the comments. I think this might have moved quite a few people if Tesla had included the other previous offer of transferring FSD to the new car, but that offer expired on September 30th. But it's still a win-win for Tesla because the free supercharging doesn't change, but they get a new car sale and an eventual profit on the trade-in. I just... I don't know. It seems like all these little games they play. And uh, then you get into this mindset of like, maybe I should just wait for a better offer. Right. Instead of, I mean, instead of what? Like, oh, Zach, thank you so much for buying a Model X in 2016. You're the best. Here's a free car. You're so nice. <laughs> no, I don't want a free car, but <laughs> I, the, transferring the FSD was kind of an important piece. And I, that's and true. just they didn't give us enough time to do it. Yeah. I've heard from so many owners who are like, that's a great idea, but I can't just buy a new car on, the, on a whim. Right. And I mean, is this going to be forever? Or is this like a limited time? No, it's limited time. Yeah, it's only till the end of the year. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to know who's just like, oh, I'll get a new car right now. Well, and it's just so gimmicky. It's so quarter related. And I mean, Tesla's not, shouldn't be about that. I don't know. 
Well, here's a nice story, though. This was from a report that Tesla made to the Travis County Commissioner's Court in Texas on October 3rd. We get to see Giga Texas's community investment plan. So as part of the incentive package to attract Tesla to build their Giga factory in the Dell Valley Independent School District, Tesla got some tax incentives. But Tesla is also giving money back to a bunch of community partners, including over 375000 to the Dell Valley Independent School District. We see here that Tesla has supported STEM and other educational programs, community outreach, and volunteer volunteering opportunities where Tesla employees have helped clean up the Colorado River. We also see that Tesla has set up educational and workforce development programs at Giga Texas, including a manufacturing partnership program where they help 200 students this year, and they're expanding to seven school districts next year. And on this slide, we see that Tesla has invested $5.8 billion in real estate and business property, and it'll be over $10 billion when Giga Texas is completed. Right now, Giga Texas alone has over 12,000 employees. So this slide shows the economic impact to Travis County, over $2.2 billion in sales activity with over 15,000 thousand jobs and over 789 million in wages. And speaking of wages, the average base wage is $74,206. And when added up with the equity compensation, that comes to over $131,000 a year. And I think there's a big part that people don't get because most other companies don't offer this. The base wage is awesome, but then you get Tesla stock as well. And so, I mean, yeah, that's a great salary. This slide here shows how much taxes Tesla has paid, almost $50 million in the past three years to the Dell Valley Independent School District. And Tesla is underway with the 120-acre Giga Texas Ecological Uplift Pilot Project, where they're planting new trees and wetland plants and removing invasive species all along the Colorado River. So you can see why communities are vying for Tesla to build Giga factories in their areas. It brings tremendous growth opportunities in terms of jobs, taxes, and infrastructure. I think a lot of people forget how big Giga Texas is. Yeah, 10 million square feet of floor space. It is the second biggest factory by size and the second largest building in the U.S. by volume. And the only one that's bigger builds airplanes. Exactly. I urge you to watch a drone video of the construction going on over on Joe Tegmeyer's YouTube channel. It's so incredibly fascinating to watch. It's mind blowing. And the thing is, this is like a first person perspective. You get to actually see what's going on instead of letting the media tell you what's going on. And Joe does such a good job of explaining what it is that you're seeing because it's one thing to see a giant construction site in a giant building um, but it's another to just kind of be walked through here's what this is here's what they're doing here exactly um, and, and you get to see cyber trucks all the time driving I, around i know and so great joe it just knows everything about what's going on there i feel like he could easily transition to working for tesla as like a manager because he knows everything that's going on all right it's time for the cyber truck roundup yeehaw the Cybertruck Roundup. So I wanted to take a look at this shot from Joe Tegmeyer the other day at this Cybertruck at Giga Texas. It is so dusty there. But if we zoom in, it gives us a great look at the wiper action of the Cybertruck. That is enormous. I think most people can't understand how big that one windshield wiper is. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are kind of rightfully nervous about like winter weather mm. because I mean, I have always had trouble with every car that I've ever owned, including Tesla's with the windshield wipers in the winter. Mm -hmm. It's something it's not anybody's fault. It's just that winter absolutely sucks. And now that we have a windshield wiper that's like longer than most like ice scrapers that I have, I'm just... I don't know. I'm a little nervous. I think you just get out there and <laughs> shoot at your windshield and break up the ice. <laughs> oh, my God. And I know some people won't believe this. The Cybertruck is pulling into a garage. Wow. Can you believe it? I personally don't care. I <laughs> won't be parking our Cybertruck in a garage. And also, we don't know how big that garage is. So it's a bit moot. But there is certainly a vocal minority who really cares whether or not it will fit. Uh, well, we know at least one thing, and that is it will fit into that garage. Well, and we know from last week that it's got a smaller footprint than the F-150. So, I mean, if you can park an F-150 in your garage, you can park a Cybertruck yeah. there. And we get to see the Cybertruck at a supercharger alongside an S and a Y. Yeah, and I have to say, it looks really good. Yeah. Um, and this gives you another size comparison. It's not, it's not enormous. Okay. It's a pickup truck. It's a pickup truck, but it's not, I mean. I think what throws people off is that it doesn't have the normal pickup truck front. And so we're all like, well, we're, we're I don't understand it. It doesn't have hardly it. anything no. that <laughs> you normally would see no. on a car. So it's really hard to get that sense of scale. Tesla's latest update to its VIN decoder includes the Cybertruck. So we get to see some new information. 
revealed within the code. Okay, so what did we learn? Okay, so you must study the code here, right? Uh, <laughs> under digit five, we get either a G for class G, which is the GVWR, which is the gross vehicle weight rating. So we either get 3,629 kilograms to 4,082 kilograms, or 8,001 pounds to 9,000 pounds, or class H, which is greater than 4,082 kilograms to 4,536 kilograms, or 9,001 to 10,000 pounds. And keep in mind that this is not the weight of the truck, but the GVWR, or gross vehicle weight rating, which right. is the maximum allowable weight of a vehicle, including its cargo and passengers. So for comparison, our Ford F-150 Lightning has a GVWR of 8,250 pounds to 8,550 pounds. So many people are saying that the Cybertruck will probably be a bit heavier than the F-150, um, which is 6,015 pounds. So, but again, we don't know. This VIN doesn't tell us that. It just tells us these two possible GVWRs. We do get this under digit eight, though. Uh, you either have a D for dual motor or an E for triple motor. And again, this isn't confirmed. All, all over the internet, it's like, confirmed! We now know exactly what the cyber... No, it's just a guess. It's just the VIN codes. And so we're not going to know anything until later. But this means that this is not going to be a rear-wheel drive version. Of the, the, that was a lie. The $40,000 uh, cyber truck is not true. And we're all in trouble. And, uh, uh, we don't know. Right. It's very it's a unlikely. decoder. They didn't, they didn't decode anything for us. They just said, what, here's what... I what I think we can take away from this is, though, my guess, my best guess, conjecture... Is is that we probably aren't going to see a rear wheel drive single motor unit anytime soon. I think the Tesla is going to stick to the higher price trims first. As they usually As do. they usually do. Not a big surprise, everybody. And hey, if you want to talk all about it and, and complain and all that fun stuff, go over to the Cybertruck Owners Club. That's where you're going to find the latest pictures and videos and all that good stuff. They help support the show. We really appreciate it. We love e-mobility. E-bikes are a really amazing new technology. There, I said it. E-bikes are a new Technology. I know that bikes seem so common and have been popular for 150 years, so how can we be calling them a new technology? That's because adding a battery and a motor to a bicycle makes it a completely different vehicle. Still two wheels, but now you can have one like this. This is the Engwe X20, a fat tire foldable e-bike. It's got a bunch of features you may never have seen before on an e-bike, like three suspensions, a rear passenger seat, a battery in the seat post. Head on over to the Now Let's Review channel where we just reviewed the Angue X20 and see if this e-bike is for you. Now, does it have the features you want? Does it fit your budget? And do we like it? You'll have to watch our review to find out. And that's what I really like about our review channel. We can tell you how we really feel about products that we review. We put them through their paces and we don't pull any punches. You want to see what we're talking about? Check out our sister channel right now. Now let's review and find out. All right. So back in July, NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, proposed increasing the U.S. CAFE or corporate average fuel economy requirements for cars by 2% every year between 2027 and 2032 and 4% every year for trucks and SUVs. But the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, also known as the lobbyist group for Big Auto, challenged the proposal, saying that it exceeds maximum feasibility. By the way, you want to know who is on the board of the Alliance for Automotive Innovation? The chair is Executive Vice President of American Honda, Bob Nelson. And the vice chair is Jose Munoz, President and Global COO of Hyundai Motor Company. Now, who funds the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, you ask? Well, it's funded by over 100 automakers and suppliers. Oh, what's that? You want to know about their annual budget? Well, their budget is not publicly disclosed, but it's estimated to be in the millions of dollars. Another automotive group, the American Automotive Policy Council, or APC, uh, that represents GM, Ford, and Stellantis, they said they thought that NHTSA's proposal should be watered down for SUV and truck numbers by half to only 2% improvements per year because CAFE standards, quote, would disproportionately impact the truck fleet. And as they pointed out, roughly 83% of all vehicles produced by Ford, GM, and Stellantis are trucks. What? 83% of all vehicles that Ford, GM, and Stellantis makes in this country are trucks? If you include pickups, SUVs, and vans, then yes. GM, Ford, and Stellantis produced 16.6 .6 million vehicles in 2022, and 13.8 million were trucks. And how do we know that the AAPC represents the big three? Well, the current board chair of the AAPC is Mary Barra, oh. CEO of General Motors. And the vice chair is... 
Jim Farley, CEO of Ford Motor Company. Oh, okay. I know those guys, those <laughs> rapscallions. Now, the United Auto Workers, the UAW, also lobbied the Biden administration for lowering the standards, saying they are unfeasible. Okay, so on one side, we have NHTSA pushing for cleaner air. On the other side, we have Big Auto hiding behind their lobby groups, which sound like we're just the American Automotive Policy Council. We're a council. We're just a bunch of old people and we sit in a room and we're smart. And we think about things. We're not we're not Mary Barra. No, that don't be ridiculous. And those groups, of course, are pushing for reduced standards. But there's a third side. Uh, Tesla is now urging the Biden administration to adopt even tougher fuel efficiency standards, asking for a 6% improvement in fuel efficiency every year between 2027 and 2032 for cars and 8% for SUVs and trucks. Tesla said this would conserve energy and address climate change. So I have a question. If NHTSA's proposal were enacted as written, what would the fleet-wide average fuel efficiency be in in 2032 at the end of all of this uh it would be 58 miles per gallon okay and what is it today 28.3 miles per gallon that's it i mean do you have a chart for what it's been over the years i do okay wait a minute this this chart goes back to 1975 and all i see is a big improvement in 1985 uh-huh yep we jumped up to 27.5 miles per gallon but then we stayed there for almost 40 years uh-huh. Yeah, we only started improving in 2022. I mean, how is that possible? I mean, weren't the standards improving? Slowly, yes. But see, Americans were buying more and more SUVs and pickup trucks. And so those have different standards than passenger cars. And so the average actually went down for quite a while. We've already spent quite a bit of time on this topic, but we're also going to talk about the real reason why the big three are pushing back against better standards on this week's Investor Club bonus stories. You can support us on Patreon and get investment news you won't find anywhere else. Head over to patreon.com slash now you know. We'll see you there. So Jesse, if you thought our mobile solar trailer was cool, check this out. This is the Pebble Flow all electric travel trailer. So Pebble is a California startup that has been in stealth mode till now. It was founded by Bing Rui Yang, who also worked at Apple, Cruise, and Zooks. Now, before I get too excited, I'll need the price and the stats. Okay. Its starting price is $109,000, but if you want the Magic Pack, which adds a dual motor drivetrain and Magic Hitch, magic, 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 magic. then you're talking $125,000. The Pebble Flow has a 37-gallon freshwater tank and a 50-gallon gray and black tank, a Queen Murphy bed, a dinette convertible bed, there's a kitchenette with a 4-in-1 convection oven, fridge, removable induction cooktop, a bathroom with electrochromatic privacy glass, full-size shower, toilet, hot water, 270-degree windows wrap the walls, and it supports Starlink. It's 25 feet long, 7.5 feet wide, 8 feet 8 inches high. It has a GVWR of 6,200 pounds, so your car better be able to pull that. It has solar panels on the roof and a 45 kilowatt hour LFP battery. It has 120 volt AC outlets and 240 volt 1450 NEMA outlets for powering bigger things. There you go. Stats. Wow. I mean, that's way more stats than I thought we were going to get. Now, what's the charging rate for the trailer? They don't tell us that. OK, so we don't know how fast you can charge it. Like but, if you, I mean, could you supercharge it? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. I mean, with a 45 kilowatt hour battery, I don't think you're going to get that fast a charging speed. Maybe like 50 kilowatts on That'd a good day. That'd be my guess. Okay. Yeah. So what is Magic Hitch? What, what does that do? Ah, Magic Hitch. Check this out. It says with one touch, the Pebble Flow senses, self positions, and safely attaches to your vehicle. Also, it has a remote control. So you have this remote control so you can p position it. And then using Instacamp, check this out, you can be camp ready in seconds with just one touch. Watch the levelizing stabilizers, the stairs, the awning, the thermostat, and the lights automatically set up camp for you. So wait, it actually can drive around because it has motors yeah. in the... Wow. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay. Pebble claims that the flow is 300% more aerodynamic than a conventional trailer, which extends the range. Pebble says the pre-orders are open now and they'll start shipping at the end of 2024. So what do you think? Now, you said it has solar panels? Yes, it has one kilowatt of solar panels on the roof. Okay. I mean, it's expensive, but I mean, tr as we've seen, RVs are pretty expensive and <laughs> this has 45 kilowatt hours of battery in it. Yeah. I like we've seen this in other EVs now, right? They, they have their own powertrain so that your range doesn't drop. Oh, right. So as you're driving, the motors are going to extend the range of your EV. It's not right. going to, you're not going to have to charge so frequently. Another big selling point they were using on the website is that you don't have to go anywhere. You could just keep this parked outside and it's like a second office kind of thing. No, that's a really good point. I mean, yeah. most campers are campy right. and this is a lot more like a house. Right. 
don't know. Let us know down below what you think. And I mean, we're going to reach out to Pebble and see if we can check it out. Hey, and if you want to share a clip you've seen on the show, but you don't want to share the entire long episode, go to our Now You Know Clips channel on YouTube or X, where we have these chopped up into little bite-sized pieces that are so easy to share. All right, it's time for the lightning round. In an effort to keep up with Tesla, Hyundai has now slashed prices of their Ionic 5 and 6. So Hyundai had record Ionic 5 sales in Q3, delivering 11,665 of the electric SUV, up 142% year over year. But to keep up the push as Tesla keeps lowering their Model 3 and Model Y prices, Hyundai now offers a $7,500 rebate on the SE and the SEL trims, and now their limited trim for the first time, offers $2,500 off. Hyundai is now offering some lower lease rates. In fact, the Ionic 6 at $229 a month is now cheaper to lease than the Toyota Corolla Hybrid. So last week, the Australian High Court struck down what many EV owners in Australia were calling the worst EV policy in the world, a 2.5 cent per kilometer EV tax passed by the Victorian state government. It would have cost the average Victorian 330 Australian dollars per year, even though Victoria doesn't tax gasoline. Yeah, this is great news because it will probably stop other Australian state governments from trying similar unfair moves against EVs. All right, it's now time for our SpaceX update with Ellie in space. And Ellie, when are we going to see the next Starship launch? Hey, Zach and Jesse, here is your SpaceX news update. We're seeing a little bit of action down at Starbase, but the message remains the same. SpaceX posting on X about the fact that they are still awaiting that new launch license. They're ready to go. You can see it in this post from September 30th. You can see it in this recent post from October 20th. They are ready for flight two and they are just waiting on the green light from FAA and FWS. And we had another really interesting development that was not at Starbase, but it pertains to that launch license. The Senate got a mouthful this week from different space executives, including William Gerstenmaier from SpaceX, who says that these delays are causing major issues for human spaceflight and going back to the moon and Mars. I was a little surprised to see that Elon didn't directly post about this or reply to anything about it. And I was also surprised to see that SpaceX didn't say anything publicly on their X account. However, it is worth noting that William Gerstenmaier, who was a longtime NASA employee and is now with SpaceX, did a great job of representing SpaceX and telling it like it is, being very blunt and explaining why this is such an issue. Can you both talk about how just a one day delay in the mission or the result of a delayed FAA license can set back uh, you know, missions for months. You know, our approach to the way we do development is we have a very aggressive test program where there's no humans on the spacecraft and we test the spacecraft in an environment to understand how it actually flies and operates. We also do that consistent protecting the public. We, we wanna make sure that no one gets hurt, nothing is damaged except maybe our own facilities, but we use that as a, a series of test flights. With that approach, it's important we fly as soon as we can, the hardware is really ready to go fly. When we have regulatory delays, such as we're facing right now, that slows down this developmental test flight, and that ultimately slows down our support to NASA and slows down our support to, to what we need to do for the to return humans back to the surface of the moon again. Now, the little bit of activity that we did get to see down at Starbase, like I mentioned, was this stunning video here. SpaceX performed a single engine static fire on Ship 26, and this is demonstrating a flight-like startup for a Starship deorbit burn. So as usual, we are still trying to pin down the next launch date. However, I think that this Senate committee hearing was very powerful, and I think we'll start to see some some movement, hopefully getting a new launch license. We saw some literal movement down at Starbase <laughs> with Fish and Wildlife finally cleaning up some of these Fondag pieces that are very heavy. Yes, maybe I participated in the cleanup. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider checking out my channel, Ellie in Space, if you want more SpaceX news. Thanks, Ellie. Ellie doing her part to help clean up the site and get ready for the next launch I see. All right, it's time for Inch of the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. And uh, again, <laughs> every week. He's I, clean shaving. Pretty much every week I do my Henson shaving. Um, I might do no shave November this year. I don't know. Oh. Just because I haven't had a beard in a long time. And oh, interesting. see if I can put you to shame. I'll join you on that. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you want to get 100 blades for free, you can go over to Henson's website, put this in your cart along with the 100 free blades, and use the code now you know, and you'll get 100 shaves for free. Actually, 200 shaves. Escape into the future
So Tesla's latest over-the-air software update 2023.38 now includes predictive supercharger availability. What's that? I can tell where you're going to supercharge. <laughs> well, it's not about predicting where you're gonna supercharge. It's going to use data to predict how many supercharger stalls should be available at a supercharger location when you're driving to it. Oh, I see, right, because Tesla already has live data and shows Tesla drivers how many stalls are in use right now. But if I'm say like half an hour away from a supercharger, that isn't really what I wanna know. Yeah, you wanna know how many stalls will be available when you arrive. I think Tesla should get Tom Cruise to film a Minority Report cutscene that will pop up when you're headed to a supercharger. This is John Anderton, chief of the pre-charging division at Tesla. The Tesla precogs have predicted that there will be three stalls available at the Denver supercharger when you arrive at 3.43 p.m. Uh, it's another reason why Tesla is way out in front of their competition. They continue to innovate and make the experience better for their customers. Right, because if I'm, say, you know, an hour away from a supercharger location, but the precogs predict that it'll be full when I arrive, there are so many superchargers around most cities now. Tesla could redirect me to a location which shouldn't be as busy. Right, because Tesla knows where drivers are going at any given point. And I think that Tesla's doing this because of the NACS adoption that's going on with non-Teslas. I think there's a lot of people out there who are, first of all, afraid that superchargers are going to get very busy, and they probably are. And so this way, Tesla drivers will kind of have an edge over them. And this is a way for them to basically utilize their entire network capacity. Right. So that way, when you say like, I'm going to grandma's house, you don't care which supercharger you stop at. I mean, maybe you do because you've, you know, gone to the supercharger reviews and you want to stop at the one with the, oh, it's that special grocery store and it has the special cake that we're going to buy for grandma. But I think most of the time you're just like, I want to get from point A to point B. I don't care where point C is. And so it could reroute you to basically a supercharger that's going to be underutilized. Right. Um, and it probably won't impact your trip that much. Yeah, I can't wait to see how accurate it's going to be. All right, it's time for Going Green. In July, Amazon said that they had 5,000 electric delivery vans or EDVs made by Rivian. You may remember that Amazon invested $1.8 billion in Rivian and has an exclusive agreement to buy 100,000 Rivian electric delivery vans by 2030. Last week, Amazon said that they have now taken a delivery of a total of 10,000 Rivian EDVs and have so far completed 260 million deliveries with their EDVs. Yeah, there's a good chance if you live near one of these US cities that you've already seen an Amazon electric de delivery van in action, you probably just didn't even notice it. And Amazon has started rolling out the EDV to deliver packages to customers in Munich, Germany. Back in March, Rivian tried to negotiate the exclusivity part of Amazon's deal, but it looks like now that Rivian has increased production and Amazon is taking more EDV deliveries, everything could be on track for Amazon to reach that 100,000 goal by 2030. And this is great news for everyone. So currently, Amazon has about 30,000 branded delivery vehicles and about 75,000 contracted delivery vehicles. So basically... A hundred thousand. Right. So if all of those become fully electric by 2030 or sooner, Amazon is going to lower costs of deliveries. Because the lower fuel and maintenance costs, not to mention the federal tax incentives for EVs. Right. And those lower costs get passed on to all of us, the customers. The best part is the quiet zero emission trucks driving all around our neighborhoods, as opposed to the, you know, the budget truck that shows up in your driveway and you're like, is someone stealing everything in my driveway? And you're like, oh, no, it's my shirt that I ordered. <laughs> EVs to the win. All right, it's time for sunspots. So it's hard to believe it's taken this long. It is now October of 2023, and the U.S. has finally gotten its first wind turbine installed at the U.S.'s first commercial offshore wind farm. That can't be true. I mean, we've already reported on this very show about the Block Island Wind Farm and the South Fork Wind Farm. Those are both demonstration wind farms. They were built to test and prove the feasibility of the technology. Also, they're relatively small. Block Island Wind Farm is 30 megawatts and South Fork is 132 megawatts. The Vineyard One Wind Farm is a $3.5 billion commercial wind farm. It'll have 62 GE Halliade X turbines, the largest turbine in the Western world, each of which produces 13 megawatts, enough power for 6,000 homes. So when Vineyard One is completed, it'll generate 806 megawatts, enough to power over 400,000 homes here in Massachusetts. Vineyard One should be producing 200 to 300 megawatts by the end of this year and full power by the middle of next year. Vineyard One is going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 1.6 million metric tons of CO2 emissions every year. That's the equivalent of taking 325,000 ICE cars off the road. 
It's hard to believe that this is the first commercial offshore wind farm in the United States, especially when I just looked this up. The first commercial offshore wind farm in the world was installed 21 years ago in 2002. The Horns Rev 1 offshore wind farm off the coast of Denmark. What's incredible to think about is that that wind farm has 80 turbines, but only makes 160 megawatts. So each turbine is only two megawatts. Yeah, it would take only 12 GE Heliade X turbines to produce that same 160 megawatts of power today. Turbines just keep getting bigger. The GE Heliade X turbine is 248 meters or 814 feet tall. It's almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty and each blade is 107 meters or 351 feet long. Yeah, just the blade is longer than a football field. Now I understand how big it is. Thank you for using American units. American unit. So this is the first time that a coastal state is going to have a commercial sized wind farm. The United States. Well, I know, but like, I mean, we've had, you know, onshore wind, we've had a lot of onshore wind in, you know, the middle of this country, but the the coasts really haven't seen much of it. And we aren't going to really see no. the, these wind turbines. I mean, you might see them if you're flying over on an airplane, right. if you're going on some kind of cruise, but these are not, you know, visible by shore because the earth right. is round. Um, and I don't know. I think that this could have a really big impact uh, just from an economic perspective. Oh, huge. I mean, just this one wind farm has 3,500 full-time equivalent jobs just to make them, install wow. them, keep them running. Like, we don't even think about that because, again, it's out of sight. They're, well, I don't see them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're, at, they're there. So if you'd like to become your own small energy provider, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They'll help you go solar and put batteries in your house for less. And they know all of the latest products. They know the latest tax rebates. And they'll do it all for free. Tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. The link is down below. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories this week. We've got two. Who's the first one? Richard sent us this story about his recent cruise through Eidfjord, Norway. Hi, Zach and Jesse. I just got back from a cruise to Norway, and on that cruise, we stopped at Eidfjord, a nice small little town, a beautiful place. And I saw, well, I decided we were just walking to town to walk about, and I came across this charging station for EVs. They had both the, uh, the Tesla superchargers and the other guys. So uh, that was uh, interesting. And after I sh shot the video, I saw a Tesla drive. You have to be pretty, pretty avid driver to be able to uh, drive to this place. So after that, uh, we went to another uh, fjord and spotted this electric boat, electric fjord cruising boat says it's a future of fjord cruising. So now you can put Eid Fjord on your map. Now you know. Thank you, Richard. And next up, we've got Joe Jetski sending us this story about why he joined our Patreon. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I just wanted to tell you why I joined the Patreon Bonus Club. You know, every Tuesday is my favorite day of the week. Uh, the TTN news drops at noon, my lunchtime here on the West Coast. I get to watch the whole episode, but then I get home and I'm kind of craving some more news, some more information. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should join the Patreon Bonus Club to get those Patreon bonus stories. The thing that was holding me back was I thought, well, it's only probably like two or three stories, maybe five minutes of extra news. Why am I paying for that? But I went ahead and did it anyways. And I can tell all the viewers that you guys do an episode every week, 30 minutes on average. Sometimes you've done 40 and 50 minute episodes. And to get all that extra news, all that extra information for $1 a month is amazing. It's like two hours of bonus content a month for a buck. And I love also that in that bonus stories, you get a little bit more um, animated. Uh, you get a little bit more brutally honest. You're still kind, but you tell us the truth. And that's one of the things the Patreon Club gets to experience that other people don't. So if you're a TTN viewer and you watch every week, you should be spending that buck a month and you should be getting those Patreon bonus stories. Thanks. Now you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, I... I forget that we, I don't know, I don't forget that we do, you know, a half hour show for our patrons every week, but it's hard to kind of advertise that because it's like, you know, we're going to talk about some fun stuff, but well, I, I don't want to, you know. Speaking about Patreon bonus stories, that's next up. And this week we've got a $30,000 Model X. Even Jesse doesn't know about this oh, yet. Wow. Oh, and I have a story that I think will make Jesse laugh out loud. Let's see if he does. Uh, and much more. So head on over to Patreon. We also got our Investor Club bonus stories. Much more. We'll see you at patreon.com slash now you know for all these stories, just a buck a month.
All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our Patreon poll this week. Uh, we asked, do you think the Cybertruck being bulletproof is going to help it gain in popularity? And the answer is um, only 76% of people said yes. I thought it would be 100. I have some comments from people at the end of the show we'll tell you about. I, I thought we were pretty good. But okay. I, no, I uh, yeah, I see, I see their point, but... Hmm. But it is interesting. I thought it would be much higher. I thought we'd be in the 90s. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Ahmad says, capturing the solar eclipse yesterday from remote eastern Nevada, sharing our images via Starlink. And uh, Elon reposted that Starlink said, our kits are designed to include everything needed to connect within minutes almost anywhere around the world and packs up quickly when on the go. Yeah, we turned on our Starlink the other day. It took like 20 seconds to get a satellite. Yeah. Elon said, you should join the Diablo community. My character is a god. I mean, gif of war. Rune says, idea, technology journalists that like technology. Elon says, great idea. Doge Designer says, Google should penalize such websites for spreading lies and false information. X is literally at an all-time usage and has grown massively in this one year in every aspect. Elon says, they reek of desperation. I've lost count of how many times they've predicted that X would fail. Still here, babe. Kremiu says, the FBI has finally released crime statistics for 2022. Let's have a short thread. First things first, here's how recent violent crime trends look. Elon says, wow, big increase. Not the Bee shows ancient objects' ability to warp reality. And of course, legacy media is greater than a black hole. Elon says their choice of narrative, what to focus on, is the biggest lie of all. Wall Street Silver says spotted across from a school in San Francisco, the sign reads, meth for stolen items. What the heck is going on in America? Elon says if criminals know they won't be arrested, then they may as well sell fentanyl and stolen goods openly. No reason to hide. Scott Adams says, I quit eating bread products several months ago and had the following outcomes. One, I drifted down to my ideal BMI without any conscious dieting. Two, my continuous full body inflammation and aching that I assumed was age related disappeared completely. And three, my sinuses opened. Elon says, that diet works for a lot of people. I love carbs and dairy and feel great, but I don't have them in large portions. Holmar's catalog says, there's only one company that experiences production hell and it's Lucid. Elon says, sales hell too. Michael Schellenberger says the mainstream media insists that the censorship industrial complex is a conspiracy theory, but it's not. It's real. And now 138 artists, journalists and public intellectuals from around the world from left and right are calling on governments to dismantle it. Elon says, great. Ian says, the New York Times tells lies endlessly. And Elon says, wow, fake photo. Michael Sanger says, yesterday when the New York Times published a fictitious story from Hamas about Israel bombing a hospital, New York Times used a picture from a completely different location to make it look like a picture of the hospital that was destroyed, astonishing disinformation and journalistic malpractice. Elon says, I find it hard to read, to be honest. Once in a while, there's an interesting article, but that's increasingly rare. Tiffany Fong says, Barbara Freed, SBF's mom, yelled at me outside of the court today. What the f***? Elon says, can't fault someone for defending their kid, but Babs literally wrote a book about how crime is not the fault of the criminal, which her son clearly internalized and landed him in this pickle. Michael Schellenberger says, citizens are spreading dangerous misinformation on social media platforms, say journalists and governments, but inaccurate stories on the Gaza hospital explosion prove that the most dangerous misinformation comes not from citizens, but from journalists who rely on governments. Elon said, exactly. Doge Designer says, this is yet another fake story from the mainstream media. Elon Musk confirmed that he is not considering taking X out of Europe. Elon says, yet another tedious fake news story from the legacy media. X News Daily says, new, similar posts will be an X premium feature. Elon says, it is relatively compute intensive as it performs a semantic slash vector search of the entire X system. Could be powerful, though. Farzad says Ford was the first to join the Tesla supercharger network in May of 2023. Five months later, every major automaker except VW has also joined the network. Elon says to the well-organized mind, it was inevitable. Unusual Whale says a U.S. judge has ruled that California's assault rifles and weapons ban is unconstitutional per Reuters. Elon says I bought an arsenal just before this law went into effect, required a mountain of paperwork. Wall Street Silver says it's too late to stop it. Germany and other EU countries have already imported their replacement population. They reach a level of critical mass in numbers where Germany won't be able to withstand the demographic pressure. Germany thought they were importing eager workers, but instead they imported the third world problems and lots of people on their state welfare. Elon said Europe is headed for civil war. Jeez. Nick St. Pierre says Mid Journey is more creative and interesting than Dolly and Firefly will ever be and I will die on this hill. Elon says Mid Journey is great. Holmar's catalog says Tesla needs to advertise here and buy Ross and Gary a hotel where they can watch it all day. Elon says, I love that sphere, to be honest. Elon posted this in 2018, going to create a site where the public can rate the core truth of any article and track the credibility score over time of each journalist, editor and publication, thinking of calling it Pravda. And then he responded to himself years later now and he says or maybe just x all right it's time for community mail time community mail time and remember share your stories and your photos and videos with us at hello at now you know channel.com 
John spotted an EV6 police car in Cork, Ireland. Isaac saw the Cybertruck in Clearwater, Florida. Brandon spotted these 56 electric Verizon e-transit trucks in New Jersey. Ryan saw this Hummer EV while taking his kids to school in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Justina spotted this Hummer EV in Santa Barbara, California. And Joel spotted another Hummer EV in Iowa. Corbin saw this Volkswagen ID4 in Jordan, Ontario. Chris sent us these pictures of the first Rove charge site in Santa Ana, California that we covered on TTN a couple weeks back. Thank you for sending those. Ron saw this Rivian R1 S in Los Gatos, California. David spotted this Lucid Air and Cadillac Lyric driving next to each other in Beaverton, Oregon. Christopher found this Landcare Company Model 3 in California. And Carl found this Kia EV9 charging at an Electrify America charger in White Settlement, Texas. All right, it's time for EV tip of the week. And Sean sent us this Tesla tip about how to keep the radio in the car on even if the driver exits. I have that problem all the time. Okay, so when the driver exits a Tesla and takes their phone key to go into a store, for example, the car locks and the screen shuts down, even though there may be a passenger still in the car wanting to use the radio, climate controls, etc. If the passenger opens the door more than one minute after the car locks, the alarm will sound. Presumably, the weight of the passenger in the seat does not prevent the car from locking as a heavy object left on the seat could then defeat the walk away lock feature. So to prevent this, have the passenger touch the screen within one minute of the car locking, turn on camp mode before leaving someone in the car, close the driver's door only one click, i.e. not completely. And of course, the car will not lock if the passenger has a phone key with Bluetooth enabled. Yeah, nice. I, I, that's a good one. Tapping the screen does work. And uh, I forget about that. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of intuitive because like the screen turns off and then you're like, hey, <laughs> turn back on and it, and it totally works. Yeah. And I think that that's such a great feature that Tesla enabled. Um, because, but, but a lot of people don't know about it. So right. it's good that you tell us. Thanks so much, Sean. All right, it's time to see the supercharger reviews that people have filmed for us out there in the world. Let's see what we got. This is Graham Calder with another supercharger review. And we are at a 10 stall supercharger in Lévis, Quebec. I believe there's a 150 watt stall. And it has one pull-through stall behind me there. That is great if you're towing. I wouldn't say this is the most convenient for someone who's on a road trip through the area. However, there's a lot of those that exist already and I'd like to see this one being right beside a SAQ, which is our, our um, uh, provincial liquor store. There's a bank, there's a big grocery store, there's a really big health food store. There's Dollarama, there's all the things you need. And there's also subways across the highway. And there's a Tim Hortons that is, you know, a two minute walk from uh, the actual charging stop. Uh, it has also two standard EV chargers for other types of cars. So I like that they're combined in the same space. Um, so they can see how quickly we come in and out of these stations. But anyway, that's, uh, that's it. So pretty decent location, really good amenities if you're doing a regular daily commute and you need groceries and banking and whatever else. And I'll give this a eight out of 10, I think. Uh, it's pretty windy though, and right by the noisy highway. So eight out of 10, now you know. Okay, hello everybody, this is the Supercharger Review. Um, my name's Adam, we, we got four stalls here. Um, that's my dad's Cecil, we're charging it. Um, we're in Slovakia, Zvolen right now, in Zvolen, it's in Europe, and more specifically it's in Slovakia. Then um, we got the Cascadi Hotel, it's got a very good playground for kids, it has a trampoline, and it has wellness, and very fine dining. It's a very luxurious hotel. Then we also have the um, Škoda. It's a car that's made in Czech Republic. And, and it's like a very com common and popular car in Europe. This one is fully electric. My dad and me has never seen one that's fully electric. Here is the um, charge port. Um, and, um, and then also it has a magic dock. dock. I forgot about that one. These, char these superchargers have a magic dock. Okay, now you know. How do you rate it? Oh, sorry. Okay, um, um, I rate it eight out of 10. Okay, now you know. Hey, now you know community. This is Joel of the Portage, Indiana truck stop. Uh, it's got a uh, Roost Chicken Place and a 7-Eleven inside. It's eight stall version three. There is a uh, pull through for towing here. Uh, it's right on the tollway, right? as It's about to end getting into the Illinois, Indiana border. I'd say this one's probably on limited options, so only a five out of 10. Now you know. Hello, I'm Carlos Steve, and we're at a new supercharger that opened a few days ago. It's a 40 stall V3 charger, and uh, it's the top of a tall parking lot. I think it was open two days ago. There's a Walmart, Fat Burger, Burger King, and a lot of Chinese food around here. I think this is a quite a nice supercharger, but it's also the top of a very tall parking lot. This is four floors tall. It's very annoying to get to, so that's why I think I can only rate it an eight out of 10. 
Thank you for watching my Supercharger review. Thank you so much for doing Supercharger reviews. Um, we gather them from our website, uh, nowyouknowchannel.com. We have a big map of all the superchargers in the world. We also do destination chargers. You can review them and upload your reviews there. So it's that so way easy. You can get on the show. Yeah. All right, what do we got for new superchargers in the world, Jess? We got the six stall in Wuhan. We got the eight stall in Nortonville, Kentucky. The 20 stall in Burlingame, California. We got the eight stall in Fremont at Civic Center Drive, California. Number 30 in South Carolina, the 12 stall at Fort Mill. Number 160 in France is the 16 stall in Bouvet, France. The two stall 120 kilowatt in Jinghuyan, China. We got another two stall 120 kilowatt in Jinghuyan at the Service Center West in China. We got the three stall in Urumqi, China. Got number 43 in Arizona, the 16 stall in Phoenix at Cactus Road. Number 145 in Florida is the 8 stall at Miami Gardens at Northwest 183rd Street. Got the 6 stall in Longyan, China. Number 36 in Nevada is the 12 stall in North Las Vegas. Number 397 in California is the 16 stall in Roseville. The 6 stall in Shanghai. We got another 6 stall in Shanghai at the Jingwan Center. Number 139 in Texas is the 12 stall at Natalia. The 3 stall in Wuzhang. Number 44 in the Netherlands is the 20 stall at Wolvega, Netherlands. Number 63 in North Carolina is the 12 stall in Troutman, North Carolina. Number 1,865 in China is the 3 stall in Ningbu. Got number 70 in Australia, the 4 stall in Wangaratta, Victoria, Australia. Number 13 in Kentucky is the 12 stall in Lexington at Meyer Way. And number 39 in Colorado, number 1997 in the USA, number 5651 in the world is the 16 stall in North Glen, Colorado. So you think we're going to hit 2000 in the US next week? I don't know. I hope so. Don't forget to check out Copilot and use the QR code on screen or click the link in the description box to get a 14 day free trial with your own personal trainer. I mean, what do you have to lose? Except maybe a few pounds. Look, you're going to feel good. Your co-pilot personal coach is going to make the difference. Give it a try. Hey, thank you so much for watching this episode. We could not do it without you, and we definitely couldn't do it without the amazing patrons that you're seeing scrolling by here. You can join them by heading over to patreon.com slash now you know. And it's not just a thank you at the end of the show. You're going to get stuff every week. Right. Um, as Joe talked about, I mean, you get like a 30-minute Patreon bonus story, and that's just for a dollar a month. Yeah. So I hope you really enjoyed this show. Um, we'll see you next week. And if you want to see more stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash now you know.